Hello and welcome back to MDG Media. This is coverage of the 2024 Yerva Open Tuni Combination Tournament. This is Round 1 Front 9 MPO feature card coverage on MDG Media. I'm Connor Wood and with me, Elias Lukanen. What's up Connor? Nice to be back here in the booth with you. Very special booth we have here today and a special tournament. One of the more legendary courses in Europe, I'd say. There's no doubt the history here is absolutely astounding and we're just happy to have a course here to play and to have this incredible Silver Series Disc Golf Pro Tour event. Very exciting, bringing the best talent from around Europe and the United States here. We see one Nathan Sexton kicking off our feature card. Yeah, Nate, obviously one of the, actually one of the only US players that stayed here for an extended European swing. Then of course a young guy from Sweden, Jalmar Fredriksson, one of the more talented players I think we have in Europe. Certainly a breakout player in the recent seasons. Good addition to our feature card. Another young man who is absolutely lighting it up this season, Roland Kaur. Incredible on the disc, both the green and the fairway. Great control of his angles and great up and coming Estonian superstar. Yeah, and the highest rated on the card, Lauri Lehtinen. Player that has been top three in Finland for many years in a row, rating wise. Hasn't won a lot of big international tournaments, but has a chance here. And starting on a hole one that is a great hole for a roller, might be one of the best holes for a roller in the entire continent of Europe. Really plays well for a very understable disc that flips over for sure at the very end of the roll. Or you could also throw a turnover backhand that is a bit more risky with the right to left hillside. If you have a huge forehand, I think that also plays here. Certainly that late upslope playing quite friendly. As we see the cards kick it off. Some great weather here for round one, about 20 degrees. I think Nate is a player that could really go either way. He has a great forehand, but also he's quite comfortable with those rollers. It's going to be interesting to see what he chooses to go with. Okay. Good luck, everyone. The design of Yerva really offering players quite a few choices on a lot of these holes, able to craft the angle that is to their preference. And you see him lay down this roller on the cut angle, trying to battle that right to left slope and just pushes it a bit long, even at 121 meters, you see him just a few outside. If he had curled that a touch earlier, it would have been pretty much perfect, but you see him pay the price there. For the lefty here, it's honestly one of the better holes you can have for a lefty. It's a pretty basic shot, flat to hyzer. You still need to hit that late gap though. Yalmar here, nice line, just needs to finish right. Miss a couple of trees and look at that result. Just perfect start on a hole that isn't really birdied that often. We see Roland here, he's had some great experience on these big stages already this season and certainly proving himself to be some of the top talent in Europe at the moment. As we look, he's playing the air shot, long turnover here, finds a little bit too much turn and cut rolls down the hill. Curling actually out of bounds and then back in bounds at the last moment. Dramatic start for him, but he'll be left with a long birdie look. Yeah, that's kind of exactly what scares me with uh, with that backhand turnover. It's very precise with the angle. If you turn it over too much, you might cut roll OB, but if you fade out, you can also fade out OB. And Lauri, not a big roller player. He's also going for that turnover. A bit left out of the hand. Looks like he has crushed the late trees. Didn't really see the disc, but... Oh, did he kick OB? That's quite unfortunate. I think he might have gone out of one of those trees. He hit the branches right above the OB line in the top left frame and you see his disc there fall straight down into out of bounds. 
Roland here battling the low ceiling, just chips up his approach, going to be left with a tap in par. And you mentioned it, not an often birdied hole. Elias, do you have some statistics for us? Yeah, just 22% of the field getting the birdie on this one, which is, especially for the front nine of this course, it's some of the lower percentage. You know, you see a lot of holes being birdied 40% of the time, 30% of the time even. And Nate there, that would have been an important save for the momentum of his round. But a healthy bid, and from Hjalmar, after such an amazing shot, he slips out the left side. I think not quite going through the full routine, given how short that was. And unfortunately, his birdie becomes a par there. But no damage done. Definitely, though, a little bit of a, a mental note to start off your round to miss such a, a manageable birdie putt. Yamar is a player that, you know, he used to putt really hard with a really firm spin putt, even from short distances. Nowadays, a little bit softer from close. And hole two, tell me about what's the play on this one. This hole is really nice. You see this left to right slope, but a lot of players won't really play with that. You want to punch through this gap with a straight flying mid range for most players. You have a little bit of friendliness to the left if you want to try and hyzer in a soft hyzer plays and to the right a severe drop off no more than two meters from the basket's edge so whether it's on your tee shot or approach you need to control the touch the angles and make sure not to get too much ground play hole two is definitely one of the easier holes of the course third easiest playing 0.18 strokes below par on average and Yalmar here, this is the common shot. I'd say a bit trickier for the lefty, as you can't really use that left side hillside to your advantage. And he just flew it over the green, a pretty tough mistake to make, considering that the long right side is the biggest mistake here. And this is that soft hyzer I mentioned, flipping up to flat, perfection for Roland, but comes in really fast. Great backstop for him there to leave himself with a circle one birdie look. We go to Nate now. Also looking to shape that hyzer flip up the middle, but just has the late release. He asks for a friendly kick and sits right down. Certainly could be worse. That's a manageable par. Tough start for Nate. Not going to be able to birdie this hole too, even with it being one of the easier holes off the course. And this play from Lauri, it was a little bit early out of the hand, but... Oftentimes, as happens there, you can actually get through those left side woods and even bounce right towards the basket. So he's gonna have a look and Nate here. This is just a layup. Doesn't want to mess with the hillside. Outside the bullseye. Easy par there. I think the priority for him, keeping it short of the basket, making sure not to play on that hillside, which we see Hjalmar now coming back up from. And you see just how obstructed it can be. He's about circle's edge, really not that far away, but... Incredibly obstructed. We go to Lowry for the birdie, and he's good for it. Really nice putt there, and fading left could have been danger for him, so fantastic to stick that. Yeah, great confidence builder, especially after the bogey start. Rohan there, very surprising miss. His putting was one of the things that made him place so well in, in Estonia last weekend's Disc Golf Festival. And solid comebacker, solid make, not really the greatest of putts, but he's going to be fine with a the par there. Hjalmar, a unique putting stroke. You mentioned the spin which he generates earlier, Elias. Really isolates that arm, not much lower body involvement, but very reliable on that straight release. Just a flick of the wrist. Compare that to Nate's form, very leg heavy, really gets into that squat and pops up from the legs to generate the force in that straddle release as he does find his par scramble after a tricky tee shot and moving on to hole number three another very birdieable hole it's one that you really want to get especially playing in this round one feature card 103 meters the most open line here is going to be a right hand turnover backhand but most commonly a right hand forehand hyzer of course for Yalmar it's going to be just a backhand hyzer Really nothing in the way for that line. The only danger here is going to be that OB on the long side. If you're a little bit short, it cuts, you know, it it uh, cuts in a little bit wider. So either be short for the safe shot, or or if you want to park it, you have a bit less room here. 
just a fantastic width and height. You see a perfect touch on the distance as well from Lowry as he is absolutely parked, looking to get his second birdie in a row. We go to Hjalmar, as you mentioned, able to show, throw the backhand for him a comfortable hyzer, but gets this very wide and is not able to swing back in time. He will be left circle two with a par save look, although a tough one. Roland going to be looking to shape this turnover backhand. The height will be important here to try and beat those late trees, but in fact he splits them perfectly and even gets it closer than Lowry. Two perfect shots and you see great examples of both the backhand and forehand execution there. I love that shot from Roland and really this hole and the last hole showing off his accuracy with the backhand. That's what he's known for. He's a great putter, C1 and C2 and his backhand while it is not the biggest in the field as far as distance, he has great control over it, especially with tighter gaps. And Nate here showing what a veteran forehand player he is. That just looks incredibly easy for him. Yeah, I think that's Nate's bread and butter there. Shaping the overstable forehand hyzer. Gets a great one angle pushing shot. And just pure control the whole way. Never in danger. And this is Yalmar now for par. Doesn't really have a great line at the basket. Kind of unfortunately going OB just behind some of those trees and he's gonna be dropping two strokes to the entire card with everybody else in the bullseye here. Certainly an attackable hole as our feature card begins to heat up a little bit, some confidence gained here on three. As they'll move to four, which is certainly a slightly harder birdie. We see a check-in already by the end of the day at this feature card playing. Some good scores have been put up there. Eka Kolhi at eight under, quite a few seven Disc unders. Sport and Innova share the same values and uh, understanding how the sport should grow. Rene has always been a great partner of Innova. His vision of disc golf in Estonia and the Baltic region is exactly what we're looking for. Our goal would be to grow the sport, grow the brand, so that eventually, in the long run, Innova will be number one in Europe again. Moving on to one of the trickier holes of the course, after hole three being the second easiest, this is far from that. Hole number four is a very tricky line to get parked, 100 meters. Best player here is gonna be a low forehand or a very quick flipping roller. You wanna hit the gap on the left side of the fairway and take a massive skip to the right. You're kind of going over a small valley on the last 30 meters of the fairway. If you can land your forehand before that valley and take a skip over it, that's gonna be the best play. A lot of the times though, the closest shots to the basket are gonna go through the right side trees. There are very specific patches of both lush grass, which does not give you a skip, and shorter grass, which will give you that huge flare that Lowry finds there, gives himself that uphill look. Gonna be a very safe putt to run, a little bit of a longer one, but well within his range. We see Roland here looking to shape that quickly turning backhand, which you touched on Elias, and he hits the gap purely, finds the late turnover, and spins out down the hill. Very common landing zone is just in that little depression late on the green, looking at an uphill putt. We see Nate here, going to be looking for that forehand skip shot. And just a little bit too low there on the release. He would have liked to flew about 10 more meters in the air before taking that skip. Now he hit before the hard part of the fairway. It's very precise on this hole. And yeah, very rare to get inside the circle here. Especially if you're going through this gap that Yalmar is going through, but he has so much speed on the disc with that overstable driver that he's actually found the circle. Very well done there. And he hit that perfect landing zone to get the skip. That little dirt patch, it's hard packed, offers fantastic ground play. We see Nate with a long look, about 30, 35 meters now, just looking to give it a chance and he's done well to sit it down nice and close. Another stress-free par for him but certainly I think not too pleased to be outside a comfortable putting range. We go now to Roland, it gives it a good bid. There is OB about five meters behind the basket from that angle for both him and Lowry. So although you can run it, you have to keep that in mind and perhaps 
leading to some timidity there from Lowry on that putt. We go to Hjalmo. Hjalmo off to the miss on hole number one. That's a good make there, almost getting the bounce off the pole. And yeah, as I was mentioning, only 10 players in the field able to find the circle on this hole. 13 birdies. It's really a tough get and hole that's pretty easy to par. A lot of the times your errant shot is just gonna leave you with an easy approach. But that birdie can really gain you some strokes. I feel like that's the theme on this course. The bogeys aren't that common, but the birdies are rarely too easy. Certainly no freebies here on this MPO layout at Yerva. This one, however, the shortest hole on the course, the Island Hole 5. From a slightly elevated tee pad, players will be throwing to this mounded island outside playing as hazards, so they will play from their lie with a penalty stroke if they don't stick it. Really common, people will play either a backhand hyzer and trying to crash in. Sometimes people take a more direct line with the forehand or even straight flying backhand, but the key here is to hit the hill in a spot where you will not roll or skip too severely. Controlling the speed and angle that you come in with is very important. And Yalmar here will do something that he's known for. He loves to throw the right hand forehand for the control shots. And that's a great line while a little bit long just curls back from the hazard. Solid result, although that is not really a putt you want to run on this hole, unless you're feeling very confident, especially with the left hand, he's going to be fading towards the hazard. Lowry also opting for the very straight line, and you see the, in comparison to Hjalmar's shot, hitting the front of the hill, slowing him down compared to Hjalmar, who landed on the top. That is a really nice way to control the speed coming in. I would say this is the most traditional line from Roland, playing a sort of spiking, swinging hyzer that is very rarely parked, but most often safe. It's the biggest part of the island that's inbounds, although you're left with quite a scary putt facing towards OB. We go to Nate now. Also looking to shape the backhand hyzer. The backhand hyzer is great, especially if you can throw something a little bit slower. If you throw a mid-range on it, it's rarely rolling compared to this driver that Ney threw. Stays in bounds, but even on the very small, a very small angled hillside that he landed on, try to roll towards that hazard. And yeah, just all about controlling that landing zone. Nate here, this is a scary putt to run. But he finds that the low right side is good for him. And a pretty crucial make there for his round as he has now put himself back under par after the initial bogey on hole one he is pushing towards solid round once again we go to roland with a very similar and very dangerous putt and just low there great looking stroke and just an unfortunate break that is unfortunate but also kind of to be expected if you hit the basket but don't stay in the hillside is just severe enough where most discs are rolling down. And solid stick there from Yalmar as well. Looks like he did get his putting back in check after that very short miss on one. I think the danger of this green that you touched on, despite it being a 71 meter par 3, contributes to a surprisingly high amount of bogeys for what looks at a glance like a simple hole. Elias, talk to us about the numbers. This hole plays scoring-wise just beautifully. Exactly three, three strokes average on the field. 35% birdie, 37% par, and the rest is bogey and above. I feel like that's kind of the dream for the scoring average on a hole. You want a good hole to average around even par with a lot of birdies and a lot of bogeys. And I think hole number six has the potential to do that. Maybe, especially if it was a little bit more open at the end. I think hole 6, a lot of the times players are just throwing down there towards the basket and hopefully getting through some of the late trees. There is a straight gap that we're going to be flying through right now. That is where most players are aiming. But if you want to miss, you'd rather miss a little bit right than left because you can, as I said, you can oftentimes go through the right side trees. Really difficult hole to park though. Most birdies are either... After a bit of a lucky skip, hopefully kicking a tree on the backside of the basket to not go too far long. Or if you pur pure it, you can also park it. And a tough hole for the lefty backhand, having to play a little bit with the stability. 
Hjalmar actually sticks in that tree and does not come down. However, he will have a long putt. Going to take a bit of effort to retrieve the disc and you see him absorb that moment. We go to Lowry now. Going with the typical play, which is a straight fairway driver here. A little bit more on the understable side, actually. But look at this line beautifully. And just, as I said, kind of through the right side trees. It's about 50-50 whether you go through or not. And luckily for him, he's going to be right there within putting distance. Nate now, just an early release from the hand and not finding the turn that he may have been looking for. I think a lot of players will opt for a slightly more overstable disc compared to understable with the elevation, but not finding the turn there, he'll be left with a scramble from that less friendly left side. Roland with a beautiful piercing hyzer flip, catches the front hill and skips on up to within a healthy putting distance, just barely within the circle. Another green here, Elias, with a pretty treacherous downslope if you miss your putt. Yeah, for sure. It's not a course in practice that feels very difficult as far as the greens go. But in tournament, when you're a little bit nervous, a lot of the greens do have some slope to them. And actually quite many have a severe slope as well. Especially if you're putting from the short side, as players usually are putting from. You can easily, even without a rollaway, you can go to like 5, 6, 7, even 8 meters. Hjalmar, I think, content from that drive to just lay up for par, not wanting to take on any extra risk. Roland, however, at a range where he wanted that, and you see on a lot of his putts today, just off by a few degrees, he's catching metal, but not enough to stick it. And Lowry, fantastic birdie, just pures the line and the putt, regular business for him yeah very well done he's been throwing the disc amazing besides that miss on hole number one he's been putting for birdie on every hole just one miss on hole number four a great start to the round as we saw the hot round being eight under throughout the day so far so that's kind of the number that these guys are going for eight under I think double digits is definitely possible and somebody during the weekend I think is going to shoot at least 10 under. I would agree, depending on the conditions it could be there. It can get really windy here on the hills of Yarva as we see some fantastic volunteers trying to help Yalmar get his disc. Shout out to all of the staff here in this Yarva Tuni event. Incredible support and team. <laughs> And moving on to hole number 7, 108 meters. We're going quite severely uphill at the very end of the flight. It's mostly flat, but just for the last 15 meters, very far uphill. Almost impossible to throw too far on this hole. It's pretty much a straight shot for most players. A lot of players are actually going for a distance driver on this hole, even though it's only 108 meters. You can throw a hard ferry driver also, if you have a lot of arm speed. It's really just all about keeping the height and the line correct and ideally either hitting the small gap through the trees or missing them a little bit left or right and just somehow fiddling through. Which Lowry is almost able to do a really healthy looking line that just catches those late trees. The gap is so small and so far into the disc's flight to hit it purely requires incredible precision. Yalmar here playing the swinging hyzer, the more common shot to just crash these trees and hope to filter through. He'll be left with an obstructed putt, a lot of trees in his way, and you can be within the circle with little to no look if you're unlucky. It's quite an interesting green here. Yeah, for sure. I, I bet there aren't a lot of greens on this course, but also not on any course that we have on tour that has as many trees inside of the circle. And for example, where Nate is, it's a very scary putt. He's going uphill into a side hill with a lot of trees. Same thing for Roland there. It's really a decision on this hole. Even though you're putting uphill, the uphill is so steep that these sort of runs can easily roll away if you hit the basket the wrong way. 
Nate has a fantastic height and angle just a little bit right. A lot of times players will have these wide straddles as we see for Roland here or a slightly compromised release angle compared to what they would like to putt at because of these obstacles. So it certainly creates a dynamic where players are forced to maybe be a bit outside their comfort zone on the green. Lowry here. Just a bit low and sits down. You see he wanted that one with such a good drive, I think. He was certainly looking to keep pushing this pace. I think quite fortunate actually to sit after that cage hit. It looks like the disc did land in a roller angle, but just took a good bounce as it initially hit the ground. And Yolmar there, he was just on the edge of the circle. Tough putt though, and even a tough putt for the par there just from five meters out. Certainly, and I think most players would agree that the front nine is the better scoring nine for players looking to attack and pick up their birdies. A lot of longer par fours on the back nine that players might just try to survive. Of course, they're still birdieable, but the front nine is really where you want to pick up the more easy birdies on this course. Yeah, definitely, especially... You know, for most of the field, I think front nine, as the holes are shorter, you need more touch than what you need distance. And it's actually quite a drastic change. You're going to see this on the back nine when we enter some of the more open holes on the course. And that's going to be all pars for the card on hole number seven. Not that uncommon. Over 50% over of the field actually getting a par on that hole. We move on to hole 8 here, a 96 meter par 3 with a significant left to right slope and a pretty small green. Even shots that look really good can have very long rolls. You'll see a wall in the bottom right of your frame that will catch a lot of them, but certainly not all of them. The two most common options are for the right handed player a backhand flex or a hyzer flip to straight shot. The flex will play most naturally to fade left because anything that goes right down the hill will very quickly find trouble. So you trusting some form of stability is the most common choice here. We will see Lowry looking to craft his line. And Lowry here going for more of a neutral disc, which I like for the angle of landing. It's a really tricky hole for that. You would like to land as flat as possible. But if you're landing flat, that means that you're throwing a straight disc, which if you turn it over, it's absolutely gone to the right side downhill. But Lowry, he was throwing a good shot. Just a little bit long, and Yalmar, you can see the common roll on this hole, the hillside is so steep, and he actually has a good break, doesn't go all the way down the hill, which it looked like initially it definitely could. Yeah, super fortunate to not be way down the hill there. We will see Nate here. Also looking at a very neutral flight, really straight pushing, but doesn't have the height to clear the bushes. There's no real gap low to try and hit. So you're pretty much forced to throw over all of those trees and drop down late. We will go to Roland now, see if he can have a better command of the height. And a great looking release, but this is too understable of a disc for this hole. And he has gone way to the right inside of the bushes. And that disc was actually a lost disc, so Roland... He's gonna have to go and re tee very soon as we see Nate there getting another one of those nasty rolls that this hole produces a lot of the time. Yalmar here being left handed is gonna have a putt that fades towards the slope, but he catches some chains. Really fortunate to slow him down, or he could be left with a lot longer comebacker than he would like. As we see Roland looking through some of the thickest rough on the entire course. As you mentioned, Elias lost disc, so this is him re-teeing here. His second throw, but third stroke. Looking to make a slight correction, perhaps more stable, as he still gives a touch of Anheuser on the release, but you see that late fade. And a good adjustment, but another brutal result for him. Yeah, he's just being punished by the hole right now, and you know, that's what happens on this hole if you're at all off, even if you're disc hits a tree and lands at a wrong angle that can happen so easily and one more time he's rolling way down the hill that is actually quite close to where his first drive landed 
And now just trying to get to the basket finally. He's going to be there putting for a six. As we go now to Lowry, this is for birdie. Fired it just a touch long, but very straight at the pin. And a weird reaction from the basket. It was a little bit on the weaker side, but had a funny spit out there on the left. This is Nate for par. And this needs to sit down. Fortunately does. And that's not a great bogey to take. Another hole that is playing well below par with 0.14 stroke below par average on the field and take into consideration all of these players are from the top end of the field so they would like to take strokes on the field and not lose to the field as Roland is doing plus four on the round through eight that is pretty much a nightmare start as we mentioned the front nine being the one you want to score on to put yourself back so much so quickly in the tournament can be difficult to bounce back from, but we know Roland has the experience at the top level and we'll look to see him compose himself moving forwards. Yeah, and while the holes on the front nine are maybe more reachable for the birdie, the back nine does have less slopes on the green, so I think Roland will definitely enjoy that after this episode on hole number eight. And moving on to hole number nine, a pretty manageable par 4, although you need to be in a very specific landing zone of the tee. You have this one big birch on the right side. You would like to ideally hyzer just in front of it and move somewhere towards the left side of the fairway to really open up the angle for this approach. Ideally on the approach you want to throw either a very soft backhand turnover or a touchy forehand flat to hyzer shot. Just the most important thing don't go long on this approach. And I think one of the more positive additions to the course this year is introducing this double mando. Historically, players have been able to spike Heiser or throw over that tunnel. And by introducing the double mando, it brings that very nice feature of that wooded tunnel into play and also pushes, as you mentioned, the landing zone for the first shot and challenges the second shot. So it really reshapes how players approach this hole. Yeah, it's great to see the hole is playing closer to how it was designed to be played and both of the first players really seeing what the course designer was trying to do here. Perfect spot on that left side of the fairway and Nate a little bit inside. Easy mistake to make here. You really don't want to be too wide, even though I think too wide to the right is the better mistake to do out of the two. He's going to be very pinched on that left side. Roland as well, getting a little bit too much leftwards movement, but filters through to quite a good spot, I think. Fortunate to get through those trees, not quite where he was aiming to land in, but the result will potentially work for him. We go to Nate here, pretty far from the double mando, and I think just playing a placement shot to set himself up. Catches some more trees, but that will play for a potential par save. That's enough to give him a look here to the green if he can shape this. You need to move right very quickly here. And it's very easy to hit the backside of the tunnel. He actually sneaks through the last gap. And that'll leave him with a look. Pretty solid scramble, all things considered. Yeah, I love the speed control there. Able to just land pin high there. And Roland going with a steeper angle, more speed. Huge skip. I really don't love the skip play here, you know. A lot of the discs that are skipping can roll all the way down. Fortunately for him though, he has landed or stopped inside of the circle. And let's see Yalmar if he has better touch here. Also playing the skip however, and you see when it catches edge, the exact danger you touched on. Another wall here placed by the organizers to prevent rolling all the way down because there is no OB. So players have even skipped over those walls sometimes and you can be way down the hill having to play from a lie which is pretty difficult. We see Lowry there as well go a touch long. It's an interesting approach because if you leave it short, you have a complete death putt. And if you go long, you're very rarely close to the pin. So really encourages pinpoint precision and accuracy on that second shot. And even on the video, you could see how far uphill Yalmar was trying to putt. And Lowry here, another miss from 10 meters. That is going to be the third one in a row from a similar range. They're not easy putts, but 
he would definitely like to hit at least one of those as Roland also. Bit of a struggle on the green today for him, usually a very strong putter. Nate, however, able to save the par. With that, I think the cleanest approach of this card that we saw, able to maintain the speed control on that slope. And I think this is just textbook Yarva right here. Really defines the front nine. Placement shot off the tee that requires still some good touch and power. Tricky upshot, and then I still have to make a putt. Yeah, and that was the most difficult hole on the course, so everything from now on is going to be a slightly easier hole from there. And as we are finishing the front nine, Lauri with a solid start, three under is fully okay. You know, of course, back nine is not full of gimme holes. Really, this hole doesn't, this whole course doesn't have a lot of them. Rest of the car does have some more work left to do. No doubt, as we get into the exciting back nine, make sure to join us there. Open fields, big bombs, exciting round one.